I, if you're going to point out one person today for a matchup, you might want to be a little careful with. Uh, he's been on safe the last two games. Yesterday, he had two hits, and he's pretty good on off speed. You know, obviously, Jeffrey Springs, big off speed guy, a uh, big changeup guy, so that might be a matchup to watch. All right, you're looking at Jeffrey Springs, and we'll talk about Jeffrey Springs. As a matter of fact, both starters will get the Wechter treatment coming up. The Southpaw Springs making waves with his first two starts. Corey Kluber still throwing at 37 years young. from the past three games of dominance for the Tampa Bay Rays over the Boston Red Sox. And a super start for this Tampa Bay team that's been talked about time and time again. 12-0 for the first time since 1987. Those are the Milwaukee Brewers who did it the final time. But the Rays could reach 13 like the Brewers and the Braves before them have done. The only teams to have done that 13 and 0 in over 120 years. Rich and Doug wrapping things up on another edition of Rays Live, the pregame. And now we talk about starting pitching. And there has been no better starting pitching in all of baseball than these Tampa Bay Rays. And it's Jeffrey Springs' turn. It is Jeffrey Springs' turn. And, you know, going into the season, it was no surprise that everybody was expecting him to have a pretty good year. But nationally, he's starting to get recognized. And for good reason. Look, he's gone out there and just absolutely dominated so far this season. Couple wins already on the season. But here Here's the highlight of what Jeffrey Springs really brings to the table. It's the changeup. Usage so far on that changeup, 36%. That's kind of what he had last year, similar usage. Opponent average, 057. He has given up one hit all season on the changeup and the whip rate. The whip rate at 47% is way above Major League average. But the changeup whip rate. The reason he is so good is because he can throw that change up on any count at any point in time, locate it, and get tons of swing and misses on it. It's also very good against right-handers or left-handers. Typically, when you throw a dominant slider or off-speed or breaking pitch, it's usually good only against maybe one. But with a changeup, you can dominate both sides with that. And for Jeffrey Springs, that weapon has been coming huge for him so far this year. On the other side of the ledger, Dougie, a guy you talked really fondly about last year. So I want you to bury yeah, him on this bury show, him. now that yeah, he's a yeah, Red We Sox. don't like him anymore. Is that right, Richie? Uh, no, look, Corey Kluber, great guy off the field. We are going to be rooting against him today. But you see that resume he carries in. This guy is just the ultimate professional. Uh, been struggling so far this year, though. Two starts, eight to third innings, nine hits, five walks three home runs the log ball could come into play for the Tampa Bay Rays like it has all year but specifically against Kluber because he has struggled with the home run so far as we well know the Rays lead the whole world in home runs hit with 30 maybe there'll be more coming today in this game four finale against Boston with a win it's a fourth straight sweep and they tie the record for most consecutive uh, and Valley Sports Florida the heart of the fan have opened 2023 with 12 consecutive victories the longest winning streak to open a season since the Brewers of 87 went 13 and 0 Atlanta also won 13 straight in 82 and the Rays are out to match that accomplishment here this afternoon well, hi again, everyone. Welcome to an afternoon of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. Trisha Whitaker joined us throughout the afternoon as well. Offense continues to be the name of the game for the Rays. They have scored 92 runs. They've hit 30 home runs. And a couple of guys named Franco and Rosarena have led the charge. They certainly has. And Wander Franco right now looking so comfortable from both sides of the plate, spraying balls all over the field with authority. Why do you ask? 
because of his hands. He trusts his hands. Right now, the swing, everything is on time and in sync. Those hands lightning quick through the zone, hitting the ball where it's pitched. You want to come in, he'll hook you to left field. You want to stay away, he'll shoot you the other way. And Juan DeFranco has also done a great job of getting the ball airborne, and that's what has led to those extra base hits. That's tied for first in Major League Baseball. On the other side, Randy Arozarena with a unique ability to slow down the big moments. And guess what? Runners in scoring position would qualify as a big moment. In those moments, he's 7 out of 14. That's a 500 average, a home run, a couple of doubles. That has allowed him to get out to 15 runs batted in already. That's tied for third in Major League Baseball. So both of these guys getting it done in a big way for this red-hot Rays offense. And an interesting pitching matchup. A couple of teammates a year ago, adversaries go head to head here at Tropicana Field this afternoon. Jeffrey Springs for the Rays. He's 2 0. Corey Kluber now with the Red Sox comes in 0 and 2. Where banking is instantly easy. And by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealers today. Toyota, let's go places. Rays have accomplished great history in baseball against this Boston ball club in the past. And today, as they come in 12 and 0, looking to make more history against the Red Sox. Today, left-hander Jeffrey Springs goes to the hill as the Rays look to sweep the Sox. And we welcome you inside to Tropicana Field for the wrap-up game of the series and the homestand for the Rays. Rays come in with that 12-0 record. Boston starting the day at 5-7. And, and an Andy pitching matchup, Jeffrey Springs and Corey Kluber. Well, there's the breakout leading the major leagues. The Rays are in runs, home runs, on base percentage, fewest runs allowed, and shutouts that run differential at 65. And here is the Boston lineup brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Alex Verdugo is going to lead it off, followed by Justin Turner, who will be the DH, then Rob Refsnyder hitting third, Tristan Casas at first base, Bobby Dahlbeck at third today, Kike Hernandez in center, Reese McGuire behind the plate, Yu Chang at shortstop, Christian Arroyo will be at second, batting ninth. Well, taking the mound this afternoon for the Tampa Bay Rays, it's going to be left-hander Jeffrey Springs, who is off to a scintillating start. Look at the two lines. Against Detroit, six hitless scoreless innings with 12 strikeouts. And against Oakland, seven shutout innings. Gave up just three hits on the season. He's given up seven base runners, three singles, and four walks in his 13 innings. Has been in complete command of his stuff and the strike zone. Let's take a look at the defense and see how it's going to line up behind him here. Today in the outfield left to right, we've got Randy Arozarena, Josh Lowe, and Luke Rayleigh across that infield third to first. Taylor Walls, Wander Franco, Brandon Lau, and Yandy Diaz. Francisco Mejia gets the call behind the plate. Well, there's Kevin Cash. Well, what a start for the Rays and uh, Kevin Cash. You always feel for the manager winning or losing and all of those spots in between. It was nice to see him. We had one of those shots of him with just this relaxed smile and boy you don't see managers get a chance to do that very often no and I think he loves the group that he has and he trusts them yep. he trusts them with accountability with responsibility the great thing this team has done they've done a great job of focusing on today not looking ahead take care of business inning by inning well Jeffrey Springs all set to go to work Alex Verdugo in the batter's box and that first pitch is a strike in the outer part of the plate and boy that is what Springs does he attacks the strike zone in a very efficient and intelligent way. Oh 
He'd love to have that pitch, and it's one and one. Yeah, should have had that pitch. That's a good four seam fastball. That's the thing Jeffrey Springs will do. He will attack the entire strike zone with the fastball. Up, down, in, out. Quality strike after quality strike. Yeah, the pitch just missed there. Now it's two and one. Only three pitches in. We'll see what happens. Yeah, three pitches in and I've already had two eye rolls. <laughs> well, too early for that. That's foul ball. Two and two. <laughs> Maybe just one. We're off to a good start. <laughs> well, you had a couple of them. I had a couple. So that's four we know of. The pitch away. Okay, fine. The pitch at the top of the zone. That that's yeah, that's yeah. right there. So it's two and two on Verdugo. And that pitch just dropped low and he did not offer. That's a good that's a good take number one from Verdugo. That's a new pitch for Jeffrey Springs. You know he was fastball change up slider and now he's got that slower breaking ball that they're labeling a sweeper. That was that 78 80 miles an hour. And he comes back and strikes him out with the fastball and Verdugo went to three two. Springs picks up the K. And guess what? Alex Verdugo does not swing and miss at very many pitches in the zone. That pitch is in the zone. He came into this series having not swung and missed at any pitch in the zone. That may be the second one, but Jeffrey Springs caught him by surprise. Justin Turner. That's a strike. Turner, the DH, in at 233. Had a couple hits last night and a run batted in. Out in front. 0 2. That is such a weapon for Jeffrey Springs. Again, the fastball all over the zone, but that changeup is really second to none. And a swing and miss right back. And he gets Turner on three pitches. I love the way that Jeffrey Springs creates leverage north and south. You watch that front side, that elbow comes up, and that allows him to get over the top and out in front with that changeup. He's got excellent arm speed, and the way that he creates leverage gives him excellent finish on that pitch, really on all of his pitches. Rob Ruff Snyder. He swings and shoots one deep to left. And Rosarena is going to run out of room, and on the first pitch. After the two strikeouts, Ref Snyder belts his first home run of the year. And Boston breaks out in front. Well, when you take a look at it, it's really simple. It's location. Watch where Mejia is, watch where the pitch ends up. They want it middle away, and Jeffrey yanks it right across the plate, right into the swing of Rob Ref Snyder. Just a case of mislocation and Ref Snyder took advantage. Got it into the seats there and left, and now here's Casas, the first baseman, and that pitch is in there for a strike. It's taken down, one and one. It's only the sixth home run given up by Rays pitching and the first by Springs. Fouled away, one and two. A lot of hitters looking for mistakes middle in, early in account, try to pull for power and then go into battle mode. And we got one right in his wheelhouse. High chop left side. That's Walls with the throw to first. 
They got a run on the Rip Snyder home run. We go to the bottom of the first. Diaz, Lau, into Rosarena. And Harold Ramirez down the middle. Taylor Walt seventh. Josh Lowe hits eighth. And Francisco Mejia ninth. Well, taking the mound this afternoon for the Boston Red Sox, it's former Ray Corey Kluber, the Klubot. You take a look at his career. A couple of Cy Young Awards, three time All Star, threw a no hitter. I love the five seasons with 200 plus innings. You don't see that very often anymore. But he has been a workhorse throughout his career. And the first pitch, Yandy Diaz takes that one downstairs. No ball, no strikes. Strike. Well, for Corey Kluber, not the same kind of arsenal that he had earlier in his career. So now it's all about mixing and matching, spraying across the strike zone, keeping hitters off balance. Now two balls and a strike. You'll see the cutter, two seam and the four seam, more two seam than four seam. Curveball changeup. Curveball gets that real good sweeping action. We just saw that. There's a shot well tagged deep left center that ball is gone and this is a tie game. Yandy Diaz you talk about driving a ball. Wow that had some carry. This game tied 1-1. That was like a tee shot. This was. Step to the tee box on number one and just lace one. Cut that dog leg left. Absolute missile by Yandy Diaz. You couldn't get over how loud that contact was back up here in the booth. That ball was punished. Brandon Lau looks at a strike. Fourth home run of the year for Yandy. Front. Eighth career leadoff home run for Yandy Diaz. One and two. Pitch riding in on him. He allows out on strikes. Let's take a quick look at that Boston defense in the outfield left to right. We've got Rob Refsnyder, Kike Hernandez, and Alex Verdugo. Across that infield third to first, Bobby Dahlbeck, Yu Chang, Christian Arroyo, and Tristan Casas. Reese McGuire gets the call behind the plate. Here's Randy Rosarena. Is in there for a strike. Down one and one. Pop to the right side. Thomas is backing up near the line from first. Two gone. Wander Franco. Boy, what a start. That 340 average, four homers, 12 driven in, doing a great job from both sides of the plate. And coming off a good night last night. Bronco with three doubles. Takes the ball. Scored a couple runs, had a stolen base to go with the three two base hits.
Yeah, he, he's flashed some quick hands from both sides of the plate, and they're so quick that it allows him an extra beat to recognize the pitch. And he's been doing a great job of that because he's handling all of the different pitch groups. Tanner foul. Hey, the other thing that he's done a better job of is he's getting the ball airborne more often this season. That's what's leading to those extra base hits. You combine solid contact, ball in the air, got a chance. And Franco out on strikes to retire the side. Braves get even on the blast off the bat of Yandy Diaz. We go to the second. It's 1-1. First and Yandy Diaz destroyed the pitch. He hit out to center field just to the left of center in the bottom of the first. So we go to the second. Bobby Dalback leads it off and the first pitch is just a bit wide. 1 and 0. It's a strike. 30 year old left hander. Free springs out there. Start of a swing, but a check in time on the field. Down to the first base umpire, Jeremy Rehack, and he says he held up. You got him to chase there. Two you can two. only hold up for so long. That changeup is that good. Again, Jeffrey Springs a great job with the leverage right here. Look at him get out in front, and then there's the finish on the pitch. A lot of sinking action to that pitch. Good run. Now a full count. Hernandez on deck. And strike three call. Dalbeck took that 3 2 pitch and has a look at Dick Lopez as he departs. That was there. Three straight change ups, and then he's able to close him out looking on that fastball middle in. How about this stat right here? Again, speaks to the Rays' dominance. They have been leading after the end of an inning for 83 of them, only trailing five on this season. That's in 109 innings. And by the way, let, let's 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 go ahead and, and check the, the the five innings that they were trailing. That was in one game. <laughs> that was in, in that game and the comeback that they had against the Nationals up in D.C. The chop right side for Lau getting back to the bag. Yandy Diaz in time. Hernandez is out four three. Uh, that is amazing. It may be more impressive than the home runs. Than the ERA. I mean, all of the yep. different superlatives that this team has been, the numbers they've been able to put up, that right there, they've only trailed in one game. That's why the pressure was on in the bottom of the first. Yep. After that ref Snyder <laughs> homer. Come on, can, can you tie it up? This ball one to Reese McGuire. I mean, you talk about just getting off to a wall to wall start. That's exactly what they've done. And that statistic right there illustrates it more than any other. It, it, it's um, it's like Mike Tyson in, in his prime <laughs> where he he didn't win. But he just came in and mauled you. Yeah. It was over almost before it started. And that's the way that these guys have been playing ball taking leads pitching staff closing it out. Stairs. Springs behind. McGuire three and zero. Oh. Hey. the strike in there. McGuire had a three-hit night last night. That gives him nine for nineteen. Yu Chang is on deck. Three and two. The 
saw that the other day. Ed Radis Park, an 11 U game. <laughs> and 3 1, shake the bat. And there is strike three. This, this time you just take the bat right back to the rack. 1 1 ball game. Pot proceeds support youth programming in Tampa Bay. You can win big and support the community. Visit RaysBaseball.com slash 5050. This is Luke Rayleigh leading off against Kluber. It's breaking pitch in for a strike. Harold Ramirez to follow and then Taylor Walls. Moving in on him as he fought it off, fouled it. Now that's the cutter. Curveball cutter. I think you're going to see an awful lot of the curveball and the change up here this afternoon. You've got a red hot raise offense, and Corey Kluber is going to try to, to pull the string, change speeds. A shot inside there and missed. Just working his way across the plate. Backdoor breaking ball, cutter on the hands, that fastball in and up. Foul ball. That, alive. That's a great spoil by Luke Rayleigh. Just because of the sequence. You know, just documented it. Corey Kluber just walked him from the outside part of the plate in off and then goes back out there with a quality changeup, and Rayleigh's able to get out there and at least foul it off. And he fouls this one off his foot. Ball rolling down to first. Uber 37 as we saw last year. A great competitor and uses a lot of experience and guile. There's a base hit up that right side. Going to kick off the low wall and into second base goes the throw. Rayleigh beats it in with a two base hit. What an at bat by Luke Rayleigh. He was worked tough by Corey Kluber and he just kept battling. I don't know how he kept this thing fair. This curveball. Now well, I guess it stayed out just enough on the plate. He gets around it, hits it hard enough that he keeps it true right up that line. And then off to the races. Tristan Casas did not have a shot. No scoring opportunity right here with Harold Ramirez in the batter's box. He's under this one. Pops it up. Christian Arroyo. Makes the catch. It's the first out. Let's check in with Trisha right now. Trish. Well, guys, you've asked this question on air, and so have a couple fans on Twitter. What's up with the designs that Wander Franco has on his face every day? If you notice, one day it's a cross, the next day it's a T. He goes every other day with it. The T today is for his two kids, the two lines, one for each of them. And then the cross, which he should have on his face tomorrow, he says, is for his faith in God and his mom. So, guys, just a small sneak peek behind the scenes into who Wander is and what he values most in life displayed right on his face, guys. All right. Here's Taylor Walls taking the first pitch for a strike. So now you know. I like it. You figured there was some meaning there. Mm -hmm. A little bit more than that. This is down one and one. Taylor Walls in here with a six game hitting streak. And that uh, reaches back to the first day of April. Tight there, two and one. Well, contributing at the plate, as you just documented, we all have seen and, and know what he does defensively to contribute to this team. So another Ray having a nice start. Three and one. Got the count way up in his favor. Now you can get picky if you're a hitter. Three one count. What are you feeling comfortable with? What are you looking for? Where are you looking for it? 
That's a shot. Going to be fouled. Up the right side and hooked it just beyond the bullpen against the low wall. Boy, a little bit too quick. That slower breaking ball from Kluber just couldn't sit back long enough. Two pitch. And that one biting down and in, and he is out on strikes. Too much, too much sweep on that curveball. Corey Kluber notoriously that has been his one of his claims to fame throughout his career. That curveball that gets so much sweep, gets depth on top of it. Uh, Josh Lowe. that ball foul. This is another guy, Josh Lowe, who quietly, not overall quietly, but I mean, look at these numbers, but yep. kind of quietly has put up some big numbers. 429 on base. And getting off to a quick start as he has. Swing and miss. It's, it's important to raise him. Thought highly of him for a long time well, since they drafted him really up and down last year. Made the team out of spring training this year and off to a good start. Pops it up on 0 2. Arroyo out from second base. Shallow right. He makes the catch. Lead off double and a man left on. We go to the third, tied 1 1. Pick up the series. Take a look at our bounty quick stats. Rays won 22 of 29 meetings against the Red Sox and a 12 game home winning streak. That's hard to believe in this rivalry that you have taken 12 straight from Boston at Tropicana Field. You talk about a home field advantage. Yu Chang. Hughes and foul. Nothing in two. Chang right now 0 for 21 going back into last year. 0 for 9 this season. And that takes care of him. And out in front. You know, going back to last night, you remember the bunt that he laid down in, in the yes. ninth inning off Pete Fairbanks. Down two, runner on first, nobody out. And you can understand when you're talking about those kind of numbers and, and the slump that he has been in at the plate, why you would bunt for a hit or try to bunt for a hit off Pete Fairbanks because Taylor Walls was playing back. You know, we were kind of wondering, did you not know the score? You know, what's going on here? And you go back and you take a look at it, and, and Alex Cora said, look, he was, he was bunting for a hit. And I don't, you know, don't disagree with that necessarily. However, he was giving it away so early mm -hmm. that he was tipping off Taylor Walls, which is why that play got made. Yep. We went back and took a look at it, and as the, the hand was coming out of Fairbanks' glove, he was already starting to square around. That's yep. way too early if you're trying to bunt for a hit. And that's why that was kind of called into question. But regardless, you know, Rays closed that game out. That was just an interesting play there late. The fly ball into left. Rangers there to make the catch. In any case, it, it was awkward trying to figure out exactly what was going on there. It, it really was. And I think a lot of it has to do with the guy who's got this extended over going and a little unsure of himself and the situation. And I, I think your analysis of that's right on. Do you know what the other interesting thing is? It, it, with him, it, in my opinion, starting to square a little too soon. 
Pete Fairbanks hides the ball so well. Mm -hmm. There may have been a comfort level there where, or an uncomfort level there, yeah. where as he, Pete hides that ball behind the body, and you're not quite sure when it's going to end up at its, and so you're mm -hmm. almost anticipating that and going a little bit too soon. Either way, he tipped off Taylor Walls, and Taylor was able to make the play. Yeah, because he is quite a presence out there on the mound. Big, tall guy, lanky, mm -hmm. throws 98. Short arm action, yeah. hides the ball. Yep. There's a lot going on yeah. there to, to concern a hitter. 1-1 one, one count to Verdugo. And the third into the glove of Walls and the throw to first. A quick third. Mejia will lead it off when we come back. 1-1. One, one. Celebrate the anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier. Fans can purchase a special $42 ticket, including a seat in the lower level at RaysBaseball.com slash 42. Cisco Mejia takes ball one as he leads off against Corey Kluber. Strike on the inside edge. One and one. A year ago, he went to the catching core for Corey Kluber, and here he is facing him. Kluber donning that Red Sox uniform. That's a foul ball, one and two. He has hit the home run in the first. Really opened the second with a double. And a swing and miss to begin the bottom of the third. Pitch up. Kluber picks up his fourth strikeout, first time through the lineup. That's what Corey Kluber, that's how he has to pitch. You see how he runs that four seam fastball up there at the letters. He's got to keep a hitter's eyes moving around the zone. Not only moving around the zone, but also trying to react to the change of speeds. He's got to be a, a two plane pitcher like that. Locations and speeds constantly changing. Andy Diaz takes the pitch up. The thing is, and we saw an awful lot of it a season ago, when he's right, that's exactly how what he can do. Very efficient. Two balls, no strikes. Hoover has given up four home runs now. In a little over ten innings this year. And the miss. It's two and one. Three different pitches in three different locations. And how about the 2 0 changeup in? Popped into shallow center. DJ Hernandez still coming on and makes the catch. You know, when, when pitchers do things like that, it causes a hitter to think, well, I mean, any pitch. Any count, any location, you know, you, you almost start to fill your head with too much. Yep. And then you get beat with, you know, an 88 mile an hour fastball in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not necessarily expecting that uh, right on right changeup. No, not in a 2 0 count in. And th that's why when you get it, you go, well, if he's willing to do that, willing to do just about anything. That's right. Brandon struck out his first time. Now finds himself down on the count of two. That's a tough place to be against Kluber because now anything could have happened. Yeah, that's exactly right. And off the plate. He did go and he is out on strikes. Two strikeouts in the inning. Five in the game. We go to the fourth tied one once. Pitch from 
Jeffrey Springs into Justin Turner is a strike. Ahead. Well, he got ahead of Turner, struck him out on back to back change ups first time around. That swing right there, and Justin Turner's had a number of good at bats in this series, it just goes to show you that he's not picking the ball up well off Jeffrey Springs. He kind of hung that slider in the middle of the zone, and Turner was way in front of it. Trying to get used to that release point and try to get a read on Jeffrey Springs which hasn't been easy for any hitter here in 2023. How's this one the other way out of play. You know 92 right at the top of the zone how tardy was Turner right there. That ball beat him. And that's what you know Springs can do without elite velocity on the scoreboard. He gets good ride and carry. You combine that with getting out in front and the life that he gets on that pitch. And now he out to the mound. A little conversation and uh, like this. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Never comfortable with this situation here where Springs apparently has an issue. Watch him take another toss or two. Well, something wasn't right there involving the feel of the delivery. Yeah, and he didn't like how that felt either. Mm -hmm. So Springs. Be forced to leave this game here in the top of the fourth inning. And that's precautionary, but uh, never a good sign. We'll wait and see. We'll take a look at that uh, prior pitch. Now let that fastball rip and then immediately went down and looked at that left arm. That yeah, you can see he, he keeps messing with the hand and, and squeezing it, so you have no idea what he felt, but he didn't like it. And then that that toss that he took after Joe Benj, the head athletic trainer, and Kevin Cash got to the mound. He didn't like how that felt either. So yeah, get him out of there. Well, this is one of those things you hate to see, and we're gonna get some action. Going in the bullpen. Well, we'll take another look at that pitch when uh, Kevin came out. Kevin and Joe alongside there. And, and that wasn't with a whole lot of effort either. And he immediately, the body language tells you, yeah, I, I felt it again. Well, we'll wait and see what kind of uh, word we get on this. And we'll be back with the new race pitcher in a moment. Well, the Rays forced to make a pitching change. Eric Clevenger is in the game now. Three innings plus. Springs leaving the game with an 0 2 count on Turner. And we'll. Wait for more word on that. The Rays already have Zach Eflin on the shelf with uh, tightness in that lower back. And now uh, a hand or forearm issue with uh, Jeffrey Springs. And then how about Tyler Glass now, too? Yep. I mean, that really is three fifths of your starting rotation. And there it was. There's the pitch, the look, fastball that, you know, he got that good extension, that good finish out in front. You just. 
Wonder what he felt. I mean, we'll get word soon enough, but it was enough that he was forced out of this game. He took that toss and uh, disappointed. Leaves this game. And now the 0 2 and Turner drills it into left center field. That's going to be off the wall. So Turner in at second base, jumping on the first pitch served and has himself a double. Yeah, how about Justin Turner has to sit on an 0 2 count for an awful long time and then he got a fastball here, middle of the plate up, right at the belt. He was able to look at just shorten that swing, get the barrel out in front of the plate, and that ball, the way that it's jumping here this season. There's Ref Snyder, he hit the home run in the first inning. Takes the pitch over but low. But he out. Tie game 1 1. We're in the fourth. It's a strike and it's 1 and 1. And the Rays use Beeks, Thompson, Poche, Adam, and Fairbanks last night. The day before Clevenger, Adam, Thompson, and Poche. That's a strike right there. The corner. Yeah, they haven't tried to uh, make it a secret that they are more than willing to bring their lefties in against this Boston lineup. A lot of different styles of lefty that the Rays have. Clevenger, that good fastball and that really sweepy, snappy breaking ball. Hot shot foul back a third. Oh, they just <laughs> all year, all I'm year. Telling you. One, you know, one routine hard hit ball, but that the uh, degree of difficulty shot up right there, and he was equal to it. By the way, we were talking last night about not moving the arms. It wasn't Elaine Bennis; it was her coworker, oh, who yeah, then okay. came in and turned Elaine's office into a parking lot <laughs> at the end of that episode. But you get the point. Yeah, got it. I always have to be careful. Yeah, I, I listen. You really have to be impressed with the Rays down the right field and left field line, especially the left field line. They've had more more action this season. Well, the Rays have tightened it up across the board. They, really, you yeah. know, everybody off to a great start between the lines and outside the lines. I mean, it's quality. No question about that. There's a presence. Pressure everywhere. Mm -hmm. Pressure to perform. Oh, Snyder early mound visit there with the count one and two on Rev Snyder. That's an interesting mound visit. Mm -hmm. Middle of a count where you're up one and two. Here, here's what this is low. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out here and just speculate, which mm -hmm. we're told not to do, but I'm going to. <laughs> Think about it. First pitch fastball to Justin Turner. Not the greatest location, smoked it. Ref Snyder, a couple of breaking balls. You know, then he comes with the fastball, and Ref Snyder's all over it. Maybe Kyle Snyder saw something. With your fastball, you're setting up differently. Mm -hmm. You go out there and, and get him straightened out. Ooh, that's a nice pitch. Strike call. Ref Snyder not altogether happy with it. The Rays elated. To get the first out of the inning with a man at second. Backdoor breaking ball, bottom of the zone. Impossible location to do anything with. And if that's going to get called, good luck to you. Because there's nothing you're going to be able to do with that pitch. But that really, going back to that visit, that's the only way that that visit makes a whole lot of sense. Yeah, I, I think that's a great insight there. Strike call to Casas. Fastball to start him. And 
that pitch. Fastball 94 and just could not get the call on that. Plenty of plate. Right at the bottom of the zone. You can see Nick Lentz. I mean, he's down sitting right over top of that pitch. And a strike. Curveball just looks different. <laughs> Heads and tails. Yep. Tails never fails. There we go. Two. His foot right there. The count holds at a ball, two strikes. You speed him up in with 95. How about that breaking ball? Start it middle of the plate and have it off the edge. Gets a lot of sweep with that pitch. You've got a hitter right now that's that's sped up on that fastball. Costas better hurry. It get to eight seconds and he's not at the ready. They could have called a violation mm -hmm. there. Could have called one there. And the pitch is down. He was not ready to hit with his eyes on the pitcher with eight seconds. And I think Clevenger didn't start his delivery until it hit zero. So you had yep. two opportunities for a violation and well they canceled each other out. Yep. Two balls, two strikes. And it's a full count. Clevenger worked an inning here on Tuesday. So was in the uh, game Monday for an inning. So he's been in three of these four games in this series. Forced into action here. Just to confirm, we'd like to call Crystal Steele. Yes. Three two hit on the ground foul. Three two again and it's fouled one more time down toward the end of the Rays dugout. Is busy down there. This will be the ninth pitch of this at bat. Step back. Now Casas out of the box and back in. And the three two and that's fouled again. Go to at least a 10 pitch at bat. Three two and a foul ball rolling toward the dugout. So this AB continues for Copses. Pitches. Piling up for Clevenger. Now this is a throwback. This matchup here, in and out of the box, foul ball after foul ball. The 11th pitch is hit on the ground, and that's foul. 
moving past Kyle Hudson. Yeah, I don't miss it. No. Eleven pitches from Clevenger to Casas. When he's been fouling off everything, the tough breaking ball, the well located fastball in the mid 90s. Popped up and that's going to be foul and will carry out a play. Well the Rays would have liked to have stayed away from at least a couple maybe three arms in that bullpen. Clevenger back in here. Six consecutive foul balls. Twelve pitches in. And again a foul ball straight back just a little piece of that one. Boy a tough breaking ball again. What a battle. Quality strike after quality strike and Casas doing a great job of staying alive up there. Looking for that one. One mistake and Clevenger is looking for that one miss. Here it is again. Oh! And that's inside. So he draws the walk. Well, that was quite a battle. Fourteen pitches. Casas to first. Turner out there at second. Bobby Dahlbeck. Lays off the pitch as it drops low. What do you what do you think was up with that rebel yell? I mean that that was a heck of a and at bat. I think that uh, coming out victorious and earning that walk mm -hmm. kind of got Tristan Casas fired up. Runner takes off from second. Now snap throw back to first. Close there. Diaz slapped the tag on Casas with Turner picking up a stolen base, going to third. And Yandi thinks uh, he had the tag there in time, but uh, the Rays will not challenge it. Well, there it is, and I'll tell you, he got a walking lead, no chance. I mean, he didn't even look down that way. He's trying to throw behind Casas, and awfully close, but he got that foot back in there. I'll tell you what, if he keeps the tag on him, those, yeah, well, feet, those two feet came off the bag. He did pop off the bag. Again, a pitch down. Two and zero. Oh. Yeah, and, you know, Casas got the right foot to the bag, and then there was like a little giddy up hop mm -hmm. where that foot left, and the left foot was not yet on the bag. Clevenger misses again. The bases are loaded. One out, bases loaded. KK Hernandez. And the Rays get some action in the bullpen. And Kevin Cash is on his way with Hernandez due up. And Cash. Going to take his time getting to the mound. And so the Rays will make a call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. And by the Florida Lottery, which has generated over $43 billion for Florida's students and schools. Some shots from the 2021 season and the debut of the Rays shortstop Wander Franco. New pitcher is Kevin Kelly. He inherits a bases loaded situation, throws a strike to Kike Hernandez. Kevin Kelly, a sidewinder slinger. That fastball right around 90 miles an hour sweep the breaking ball off of it. Gives you a different look. 
it's well, that looked like a great pitch, but he didn't get the call. One and one. Well, you, you saw Mejia reaching across the plate and kind of backhanding that pitch. And sometimes those optics don't look very good, and you don't end up getting the call, even though it could have been. It's a high chop to short. Franco to allow one. Over to first, a wide throw. The run will score. You had a couple of different things there going against the Rays. Number one, the chop into the ground. That ball up in the air for a bit. Kike Hernandez is going to be hustling down the line. And then right here, the transition. Here's the flip. And then Brandon Lau trying to do his best to get rid of that ball as quickly as he could. It didn't matter. Kike would have beaten it out. Everything just took a little bit too long. So it's a 2-1 ball game. Boston now. Hernandez getting the run batted in. How about the save by Yandy Diaz? He doesn't glove that ball, doesn't get to that ball. There's another run for Boston. Yep. Now Casas, the runner in third. And the pitch lined off the bat of McGuire, and it's caught by Rayleigh to retire the side. So out of all that, one run scores, 2 1 Boston. 106 years old. She's been a Rays fan ever since they came to town. And the senior living community that she lives at found out this offseason that she had never been to a Rays game in person, even though she watches every single broadcast. Before the game, she got to meet Kevin Cash. And guys, she was the play ball kid today. And she is a real fan. She said, I stay up and I watch every single game. She said the other day when they scored five in the ninth inning, Someone said they didn't stay up. She said, I told them, what? I did. That'll teach you to stay up because they won. And, guys, she is as sharp as a tack at 106 years old. Been a baseball fan her whole life. She is the real thing. No question about that. It's great to have her at the ballpark. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Wow. Want to know the count on Randy Arena? To strike one and one. Well, it's a 2 1 ball game out of that uh, long top half of the fourth. Boston settled for just the one run. Big cut there. Randy aired out that swing. Corey Kluber will get some riding action on his cutter, which is what that was 86 miles an hour, top of the zone. You think you can get there, but it, it does ride a little bit, stays up above the swing. And now he throws the bat at it, and misses. And Randy is out on strikes. And you had that blast by Yandy Diaz early in the game, and Corey Kluber's kind of settled it down here at this point. Remember, a, a Ray from a season ago, he knows these hitters. You know, they, this lineup pretty much intact from what played in front of him. And so he knows these hitters, what they like, what they don't like, and he's done a really good job here this afternoon of mixing and matching his arsenal. Wander Franco grounds him in there off the plate. One and oh. He just doesn't stay in any one area too long. He's in, he's out, soft, hard. Two and oh. That's a hot shot. Foul ball into the seats. Two and one. He has him reaching. That's the pitch that he got him with in, in his first at bat, that changeup. And it was funny because Wander Franco swung and missed in that pitch. And as he was missing it, he was shaking his head. Yeah, yeah, you got me. That was a good pitch. Two. And he comes right back and strikes him out. Yeah, I mean, back to back pitches and back to back at bats. He was able to finish Wander with that changeup. Keeps it right out over the plate in the bottom of the zone for a long time, and he got him with the location and the change of speed, and now Wander's getting annoyed. I'll give you the first one, he says, not, not this one. The 
comes Luke Rayleigh. Away. We got the two base hit in the second inning. Under it sends a high fly ball into right. Verdugo is going to go to the track. And now back a step and he makes the catch coming in. One, two, three, go to the Rays. We go to the fifth. Two one Boston. Rays 5K and family fun run comes up Sunday. Fans can join in person or virtually a portion of all proceeds benefiting the Rays Baseball Foundation. Register at RaysBaseball.com slash K. Chang. And the chopper to short handled by Franco. One pitch one out in the fifth. Kevin Kelly out there on the mound for the Rays. Well he's got an opportunity to keep those infielders busy. Pitches that he throws. The action that he gets on him, get those hitters to smother that ball into the ground. Christian Arroyo, there's a breaking ball dropping in for a strike. Yeah, he came in in a tough spot. Springs, Clevenger, and then Kelly. Kelly inheriting the bases loaded situation. That's a swing and miss from Arroyo. Made three pitches to get out of the fourth. Yeah, that was a heck of a job. Not, not an easy situation to get brought into, and you limit limit the damage. Just that one run. Swings that one, and it's fouled back by Christian Arroyo. Twenty-five-year-old right-hander. Pitch down a little bit. It's two and two. Down three and two. And this pitch is down and in. Christian Arroyo putting together an impressive at bat here after falling down early. And it's popped up. Franco angling out from short into center, and now that ball's going to drop. Lowell coming in. Took his eyes off just a moment. Had three defenders converging. A Rosarena. The third of the three, Franco out, and that ball dropped in front of low. You know, what's interesting about this, watch Wander Franco. He looks like he's got it the whole way. When he pulled up, like right here, he's got it, got it, and then he kind of stops like he heard somebody yelling for it. I don't know if anybody was because no one was going to get there. A communication issue here, and that cost the raise two bases. So now a man in scoring position. With only one out in the top of the lineup, Verdugo. That's a ball. Now that was a confusing play. Looked like that was just going to be an easy can of corn for Wander Franco. And I mean, just did you see the way his head snapped back? Mm -hmm. Like he was ready to catch that, and all of a sudden he turned like, "Was somebody's yelling for it?" And they're right up on me. And that wasn't the case. So you wonder what he heard. And this one deflects off Kelly rolls right over to Yandy Diaz over to third goes Arroyo so that's a one three and uh, Kelly trying to walk that off. Boy, 
ricocheting shot off Kelly's. Looks like the outside of the right chin, maybe. Yeah, stretching it now, getting that calf muscle moving, making sure that it's everything stable and feels good. Glancing ball, I'll tell you, that could have turned out really bad for the Rays. This ball angles itself out into right field. You hope again that Kelly's okay, but that ricochet goes right to Yandy Diaz over there at first base. Makes for an easy play and the second out. He apparently is okay, which is good news. It was almost 94 miles per hour off the bat. And now the hitter is Justin Turner. Short center, here comes low, and he could not hold it. He's stretching out. The run will score. Turner has a base hit, dropping it just out of the reach of low to prevent him from pulling off what would have been a sensational grab. And it's a two run ball game now. That ball not hit well at all by Justin Turner, but it is placed perfectly. Josh Lowe making a bid. Long stride, the dive. Let's see where that ball gets. Just off the pinky portion of that glove. The pitch is upstairs to Ref Snyder. And the run batted in for Turner, his fourth of the year. The strike, it's one and one. The last few hitters here involving Josh Lowe out there in center. Pitches inside. He made the uh, seven starts in center last year for the Rays. And this is his second start in center. He was out there Tuesday and then starting in this one. And that pitch runs in and hits Rev Snyder. He pushes Turner up to second. Rev Snyder takes over at first. When that ball just takes off and just grazes the, the jersey of Rev Snyder. Two seam fastball, it ran right up in there. Kyle Snyder is on his way to the mound. Fantasy Five isn't just a nocturnal game anymore. Now there's a midday draw. Feed the midday with the new Fantasy Five draw. Well, the Rays talk it over here, down by two. And at a critical spot now with a couple of men on, and Casas, who had the extended at bat his last time, a 14 pitch at bat before he finally drew the walk. Up, run in, two on, two outs. Breaking pitch, swung and miss. Snyder off first, Turner down at second. Down and in. One and one. Foul. Pin gives Kelly an edge and the count one and two. Herman K 
Kelly against Kristen Casas. Close two and two. Well, it was a steady diet of breaking balls, and then trying to catch Casas by surprise with that fastball in has not done anything on the outer half of the plate. Center field, though, on the move. He's going to be there for this one to make the catch. Damage limited to the one run. It's 3 1 Boston. Fifth inning brought to you by tickets, redeem offers, and have access to exclusive content and a lot more. Download the MLB Ballpark app today. Ray's facing Corey Kluber. Harold Ramirez takes that first pitch, a breaking ball in for a strike. Walls next and then low. Seven strikeouts for Kluber. All have been swinging third strikes, and he's quickly ahead of Ramirez 0 2. Boy, you can see the body language. Harold Ramirez not happy with himself after going after that high cutter well out of the strike zone. You gotta lock it back in. It's something Harold Ramirez has shown the ability to do. Did he go? He did not a check. One and two. That there was a lot of movement there. Let's take a look. Oh and two. I'll tell you. Got could have been. Got one. Yep. It's a foul ball. Boston scored a run in the first. The Rays came back with one. Boston one in the fourth and one in the fifth. Upstairs two and two. That's a shot down the left side back toward the corner. It's going to two hop below wall and in the second base goes Harold Ramirez with the leadoff double. So now let's see if the Rays can get something going. And we see Harold Ramirez all the time when he gets down on the count to two strikes he will go and battle you and look for that mistake. He got it right there that breaking ball stayed out over the plate got it right off the end of the bat but he kept it fair. He may have been given a reprieve. On a check swing in that AB, but he took full advantage and has the Rays here threatening in the fifth. Now Taylor Walls. Ground ball right side. He's going to move Ramirez to third. And Arroyo throws out Walls. One gone. Josh Lowe. It's inside. I want to know. We're going to conference on the mound going here. The Rays have put the leadoff man on base in three of the five innings. Yandy Diaz opened the race first with his fourth home run of the year. Luke really doubled in the second and was stranded there. And now the double by Ramirez here in the fifth. You know, Josh Lowe just looking to put a good at bat together, get the ball airborne, even a ground ball to the right side would, would get the run in Boston playing everybody back. Down. Two and oh. Josh Lowe has done an outstanding job this season 
breaking balls, off-speed pitches, the, the change-ups and the splits. And you make a mistake with one of those, and he's been able to, to cash in. Inside three and nothing. Another thing, the Red Sox have not had a starter throw a pitch in the sixth inning yet this season. One out into the fifth right now with a man at third. And Lowe fouls it. Swinging three and all. Oh. Not a changeup. He's had success against those types of pitches here this season. Josh Lowe likes that ball down and out over the plate, down and in. Good low ball hitter. And that's going to be upstairs for ball four. Will the Rays pick up their first walk. Francisco Mejia will be the hitter. Lowe's on the move and the pitch is fouled up the right side. You know, Lowe over the last Three seasons, minors and majors combined, is 56 of 58 in stolen base attempts. Well, he knows when to, the opportunities to take, when to go. It's an incredible percentage. 97. That think that did they say that hit the butt end of the bat? I think it did. Yep. That ball cutting in. It hit something. And right there, the knob of the bat. Yep. And it's a foul ball taking the count to two strikes. You see Reese McGuire pointing right up at it. Hey, that did not hit Mejia. I can't believe a catcher selling out another catcher like that. <laughs> Over to first. Josh back in. Yeah, he's five of five in the big leagues in the uh, stolen base department. Well, he had down two strikes. Upstairs. All two strikes. Two to ground ball. That's going to go through the right side. Ramirez scores. Low advances to second. Stops there. And that will make it a 3-2 ball game. Francisco Mejia with a big clutch hit right there. Francisco Mejia, one of the better bad ball hitters in baseball. And this changeup, that is off the plate, down below, below the knees. Look at the plate coverage. He gets out and he gets around that ball. Pulls it over in the hole between first and second. Excellent job with two strikes. Josh Lowe doing a good job of avoiding it. Want to become that out on the base pass. And here come the Rays. It's a one run ball game now with minute first and second. And the top of the lineup coming up. Yandy has homered and hit a fly ball to center. So it'll be the third time around. For this lineup. Action in the bullpen. Yandi here against Kluber. Kluber's pitch in to Yandi is a strike. It's 
team with four hits. And a pickoff back to second. And back in goes Josh Lowe. Riondi with that home run to center field in the first inning. Put a real charge into that one. And this one a little close. One and one. Plate, but much too low, and the count is three and one. He's trying every part of the zone. Strike one to Yandy Diaz. Then you miss with a fastball in, you miss with a breaking ball away, and you miss with the changeup down below. And to right field, that'll send Verdugo back toward the line. He makes the catch. The tag at second. Lowe's going to go to third. And the Rays will have men on the corners with two outs. Alex Verdugo actually going into a little bit of a slide there to make that catch. That ball off the, the bat of Yandy Diaz must have had some serious slice to it. Yep. I thought he had a beat on that, was going to catch it with ease. So Brandon Lau will be up there, and the Red Sox are going to make the pitching change. They want the left hander. Call to the bullpen brought to you by the Florida Lottery. After the game early in the fourth inning, and the Rays have told us that he left the game due to left arm ulnar neuritis. He will be reevaluated, guys, tomorrow morning. You saw him messing with his hand there a little bit on the mound and immediately taken off after Joe Bench and Kevin Cash came out. So, guys, left arm ulnar neuritis for Jeffrey Springs. Well, we'll see what comes of that. Here's Brandon. Uh, here it well. is. Ball right out over the plate. You can see McGuire reaching back towards the middle, and that's exactly where Brandon takes it through the middle. That's probably not a hit in 2022 with all the shifts, but now with that no shift rule, that opens some things up. Brandon Lau takes advantage of it, ties this ball game up. You know, the interesting thing about that, Lau. Weiss had struck out against Kluber. Which is a strike to a Rosarena. And beyond that, in his career, he was 0 for 5 against Kluber with five strikeouts. That, that's the look on Kluber's face right now. I mean, th th this is where you, you can take. I mean, I don't I don't know how the analytics or metrics don't don't like that. I mean, if I'm 0 for 5 against a guy with five strikeouts, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you're taking him. I don't care who you bring in. Sometimes you get a little too smart. Over to first, Lau is back in. The RBI for Brandon is 11th run batted in. Well, he was 0 for 3 against Blyer, now 1 for 4, but 0 for 5 with 5 Ks against Kluber. That's going to be a strike, and it's one and two on Randy. Well, yeah, that's definitely going against the analytics. That's more of a gut thing. Well, he's due. I, I, mean, I don't understand when stuff like that happens. Yeah. You know, that, that's pretty. Well, they have their reasoning, but it did not work out in that case. Rosarena, base hit into right. Here comes Mejia. Rays take the lead four to three. Randy Arrotorena down in the count, takes it the other way. How about the approach from Randy Arrotorena? An impossible pitch, and Randy just is able to dive out enough 
and shoot it the other way. This pitch well off the plate and down. And look at him go out there and get it. Big clutch hit there from a Rose Arena picking up his 16th run batted into the year. So the Rays who had fallen behind have a three run fifth and now it's four to three. Time for second in the American League and runs batted in Mount Castle of the Orioles topping that list. Wander Franco is going to be the hitter now with two men on. Oh, a great start to the season for Randy Arozarena. Takes a strike. Three runs in the inning. Four hits and a walk. And that pitch comes in on Franco and hits him. Got him on that right elbow. Yep. Or that right arm at least that ball cutting in he's showing him right there. Yeah that forearm elbow. Well, Kevin catch out there he. He wants to make sure. Wander does not like coming out of games. You can see right there. Yeah listen I, I don't care I'm fine I'm going first. Here it is. Ooh. Pretty good shot right yeah. there. Yeah that caught him flush. Back of that elbow, straight down it goes. Well, that fills the bases with raised base runners. And Luke Rayley do up, but Manuel Margot will pinch hit. Well, with nobody down there warming in the pen, you've got some action now. Kevin Cash could pick his matchup here. What didn't he wasn't worried about if you bring in Margot, are they going to bring in a right hander? The right hander Cutter Crawford is just getting up now. So that was a free move for Kevin Cash to pick the exact matchup that he wanted for Blyer. Well, the Rays will have sent nine men to the plate here in the fifth to take the lead. Now Margot puts down a bump. The throw. No throw to first. The run scores. He caught everybody by surprise and punched the run home. And the Rays take a 5 3 lead. How about that? We've seen Margot do that before. That is really becoming part of his game. And you had better be aware. He, I'll tell you, has a knack for getting it down and deadening the ball. Look how late he goes and catches everybody by surprise. Blyer has no play. We're looking at him get a full head of steam too. the footwork in the box. You've got to maintain that footwork within the batter's box and Margot boy he's got that down to a science. So the Rays with a four spot making it five three. Here's Harold Ramirez. And a ground ball being hit up the left side. Down into the corner it goes. A Rosarena has scored. Franco has scored. Here comes Margot. It's a double. A two base hit clearing the bases. And the Rays have exploded here in the fifth inning for seven. And, and this all started back with the move to go to Blyer against Lau when Lau was over five with five strikeouts against Clover. That has not worked out at all. And Harold Ramirez taking that pitch in, almost in off the plate, and he kept it fair up the line. Everybody running with two outs, and so that's going to clear the bases. You better believe this Rays offense has come to life. Now 
now Taylor Walls. How about that? It's an 8-3 ball game, a seven-run fifth inning. One and all the count to Walls. One and one. The Rays have now scored a hundred runs on the season with the seven here in the fifth. They've given up 30. Pop fly short right. That's going to be caught by Verdugo. The Rays send 10 men to the plate. Harold Ramirez with a bases loaded double. And the Rays now lead 8 3. He answered Yandy Diaz, hit one out of sight to center field. Boston scoring a run in the fourth and the fifth, so the Rays went into the bottom of the inning down three to one and put up seven runs to grab this 8 3 lead. And what an explosion! There was that bump by Margot with the bases loaded. And then this the big hit up the left field line to clear the bases off the bat of Harold Ramirez. So quite a turn of events there. Bobby Dahlbeck leads off the sixth inning. One ball one strike to him. And Will Margot. Now in center field. Josh Lowe moves over to play right. And it's one and two. All back Hernandez, McGuire do. Open all loose. Down the left field line. Two and two. And that's a foul tip strikeout. Right back into the mid of Mejia and Dahlbeck is out of there. Well, Kelly does a great job of splitting the plate east and west. And after the breaking ball, look at this ball boring in, and you just cannot get the swing there. Can't bring the hands in tight enough. To foul that off, and Dahlbeck succumbs to the two seamer. Okay, Hernandez set a pitch wide, one and zero. Oh. You see how that those two pitches play off each other so well. You have that sweeping breaking ball, getting the hitter's eyes looking out over and away, and then that two seamer running in. Ten foul, one and one. Right side. Low is there to make the catch. <laughs> Two outs, and here is the catcher, Reese McGuire.
Tapper foul. That takes the count to a ball and a strike. Movement on that pitch and it's fouled away. One and two. One and two. Six coming, eight three Rays. That well, the Rays have won 12 in a row to begin this 2023 season. And since 1900, the Atlanta Braves in 82 and the Milwaukee Brewers 13 in a row. So the Rays trying to match that. Boy, what a start it has been for this team. And they've done it to this point in such a convincing manner. Yeah, you know they're they're getting contributions one through twenty six uh, on the roster. You know the, the entire pitching staff. We've already talked about you know what they've done on the hitting end of things. You know we got thirteen position players. Eleven have homer. Ten have had multiple home runs. They got seven different guys with at least three home runs. A lot of hitters hot. And I'll tell you what that pitching staff. And pretty good too. Josh Lowe facing Cutter Crawford. Crawford had been sent to the minor leagues and had to be recalled. So he's in this game, pitcher number three for Boston. Another one of those pitchers that had that really short arm action that that hand and ball come out of the glove and it just tucked right behind the ear almost like a catcher. It's one and two. Well, the Rays have. Braden Bristow up in the bullpen. Just joined the. Big club today. Round ball will take care of Josh Lowe and that's the first out. They skip the lines and get back to the action quicker when you swing by the shortstop at the Budweiser porch for your snack and beverage needs. Francisco Mejia. Strike one. He drove in a run with a base hit and scored a run in the seven run fifth. Put himself behind 0 2. Crawford attacks these opposing, opposing hitters with a, with a whole full arsenal of pitchers. Cutter, four seamer, change up. It's up, no swing. We got two. We got both breaking balls, too the slider and the curveball. And again, hides the ball well. Saw that velocity right there at 95. Swing and miss as Mejia backs away from the plate, out on strikes. Well, this pitch right here had some giddy up to it. Able to power it through the zone and get it above the swing of Mejia. Diaz. All one. And he opened the race scoring with a blast to center field, his fourth home run. In the first, he is one for three. Two and oh. Right 
tipped it into right. It will be caught by Verdugo. The one, two, three inning, and we go to inning seven, eight, three Rays. The Rays just keep the pressure on. They have won 12 in a row, longest win streaks in Rays history coming into this game today. This club shared with the 2004 Devil Rays when they won 12 in a row. And the Rays looking for number 13. Two years ago, the Rays had an 11 game streak. And now pitcher number four of the day, Braden Bristow. Just up, 28 year old right hander. And he will face the shortstop, Yu Chang. Pitch a ball. Looked pretty good. Right down the middle. Popped up, foul ball. Diaz after it. Will he have room? That's going to be out of play. He rose deep back of the dugout. Strike Bristow out of Louisiana went to Louisiana Tech. Continues major league debut. We're chaining at the plate, Arroyo on deck. Verdugo will follow. You've already seen some interesting pitches here from Bristow. That fastball, 93, 94, top of the zone, that sweeping breaking ball right there. Little cutter on top of it. There you go, just off. The count is full. Four. A couple borderline pitches in that sequence, and he gives up a walk, the first man he faces in the big leagues. Yeah, the whole tone almost set from that opening fastball. They got called a ball that was looked to be right there. And this is the, obviously the last thing that you want here down at the bottom of the order, protecting a, a five run lead. Strike. Has a double and a run scored, one for two. And two strikes now. First out he's recorded in the big leagues and it's a strikeout. 
Well, the sweeping breaking ball, taking it off the plate. In the zone, an awful long time. Starts it on the inside corner. Look at the, the ground that it covers. Takes it right into the other batter's box, and Arroyo goes right after it. Strike to Verdugo. We up popping away, recovered by Mejia. The throw to second is going to be a little late. It's a wild pitch allowing Yu Chang to move up. It slipped away from him. A cutter. And yeah, Mejia doing his best to get up out of that crouch and club that ball. Not able to do it. And then Franco just knocking that down. Let's not let it get worse. To left. There's Arena running under that one to make the grab. Well, the Rays wrapping up this homestand and they'll hit the road coming up tomorrow. Rays live the pregame presented by Academy Sports. And we will uh, renew acquaintance with Kevin Kiermeyer now in a Toronto Blue Jays uniform. Luke Wechter will be breaking down Drew Rasmussen's sweeper. The new classification. Justin mm -hmm. Turner takes a strike. It's wide, one and one. Popped up. Left side of the infield. Walls down at third takes care of that. Walk and a man left. 8 3 Rays, seventh inning stretch presented by your Suncoast Hyundai dealer. Well, now witness the Rays match up against the Dodgers, Yankees, Braves, and more. Purchase at RaysBaseball.com. The 2023 season presented by Bayfront Health. Seven and run fifth. The game changer in this one. Rays lead eight three. Brandon Lau leads off and hits a high shot into deep right field. That ball is gone. Brandon Lau hits his fifth home run. Little doubt about that one. Just wow. watch, watch Brandon. He'll let you know. Yeah, that's a guy who knows that's gone. <laughs> well, the pitch to Rosarena is a ball. Well, Brandon had that stretch of four consecutive games with home runs. Strike. Went into the game as a pinch hitter last night. Now Rosarena swings and misses. One and two. Popped up short left. Chang out. Ref Snyder in. It's going to be the shortstop Chang to make the catch. Here is that swing from Brandon Lau. Oh, 
no doubter. That was just a rolling breaking ball that he hammers. Majestic, high, arcing, deep. Franco lifting a fly ball into right field. And just short of the track. Verdugo made the catch. Momentum carried him back a step onto the track. Two gone. And now Manuel Margot comes on. Brandon, five home runs, 12 runs batted in in his last six games. Strike. And then Will Margot. Boy, what a big butt he put down to get a run home in that seven run inning. A little tapper by the mound. Boy, over the pickup and throw. And the Rays are out in the seventh. They get a run on the blast by Brandon Lau. We're headed into the eighth inning with the Rays leading 9 3. Distance that this ball is going to go from Brandon Lau, a hanging breaking ball, and you talk about coverage. Home plate, deep right center field. That Rays offense coming to life here about halfway through this game, and they just continue to swing the bats well up and down the lineup. Bristow throwing a strike to Rem Snyder. Here's a breakout, 12 runs batted in. In the last six games, five home runs. Five home runs in his last five starts. Well, Popper going to be handled by Franco. Step on the turf. One out in the eighth. Well, the Rays. Exploded for seven runs in the fifth. It's the kind of offense we have seen out of this team. Strike one to Casas. Have a hundred and one runs scored. They've given up 30. One and one. One and two. What like? These pitches that we're seeing from Bristow, you know, that the fastball that's got some good life to it, a cutter, a sweeping breaking ball, that right there, a good changeup, showing the ability to move all of these pitches around the zone, and again, giving you a little bit different look, like a lower three-quarter arm angle. Foul the other way. The Rays fell behind one nothing, tied it. Fell behind three to one, scored seven in the fifth, and another run in the seventh to build a nine three lead. After their 13th consecutive win to open the season. Brewers did it in 87 with 13 straight. And the Braves in 82. And, uh, Joe Torrey had taken over as the new manager of the Braves, and they won 13 in a row to begin the season in 82. And that takes care of Kausa's second strikeout for Bristow. It had him looking all over the zone, that entire at bat, and finishes him off with a cutter up. Right there above the zone. And 
I'll tell you, the Rays with their pitching, one after the other. Risto getting an opportunity here this afternoon and, and liking what you're seeing from him. Pitch to Dahlbeck is a strike. Check and it's one and one. Two balls and a strike. The count. Ray's got four runs off Kluber, four off Blyer, one off Crawford. Austin got to have a starter work into the sixth inning of a game. The count is full. Cut and miss. A one, two, three inning. Three strikeout for Bristol in his two innings. Nine three Rays. Great at bat there by Francisco Mejia. Base hit. Randon Lau facing Richard Blyer, who's just come into the game. Base hit up the middle. Randy Rosarena, a great piece of hitting the other way. That right there is in the eighth inning. <laughs> a shot right back through the middle off the bat of Harold Ramirez. He had. Two doubles in that seven run fifth, and now his third hit of the game to open the bottom of the eighth. He just sizzled that one up the middle. Couldn't even get through the package. <laughs> Chevy plays of the game. Well, you know what? It, it, that's a good thing. It was a long package because there were a lot of big hits in that explosive seven run inning for the Rays. Taylor Walls. Taking the pitch down, one ball, no strikes. Well, the Rays came back from a 3 1 deficit, now lead 9 3. Last time the Rays dropped a game at the Trop to Boston was almost a year ago, April 22nd last year. And Corey Kluber, by the way, was the losing pitcher in that game for the Rays against the Red Sox. And today the Rays hit Kluber for four runs and four and two thirds. Right, Blyer and Crawford on. Since fly ball straight away center, Mendez makes the catch, and Ramirez remains at first. Went back to tag just to see, just in case. Slow he walked and scored a run in the seven run fifth. Rays have batted around now five times this season. That's pitch in the dirt around his feet. Quite a pick right there by McGuire. 1 0. And today, six of the seven runs scored. And the fifth came with two outs. That's a strike. 
Nick Lopez. It's one and one. Two and two. Headed for the seats back of third. He's head into Toronto. They'll play tomorrow night. First pitch set for 707. 3 o'clock game, 307 Saturday, 137 on Sunday. Hello. Chases the pitch up. And is out on strikes. Well, you know what? Let's go back and revisit Brandon Lau's last week. Statcast 3D powered by Google Cloud. In his last five games as a starter, he has homered five times. And look at these home run distances. Hitting them all over the place. Left field, straightaway center, of course, deep into right center. He can cover it all. And boy, they have exploded off that bat with that kind of distance. You know, he's so quiet at the plate. That he's one of those guys that just does not have a lot of unnecessary movement. Gets himself in a hitting position relatively quickly. Yeah, you know, he just stands there, two eyes on the on the pitcher. The hands sit, you know, not low, they're not high, kind of mid-range. He's got a little load, and boy, does he get into a baseball quick. Very efficient swing. He uh, pops it up left side. Ball back. Fair ball as he makes the catch. So the Rays are out in the eighth. They leave a man and lead 9 3. In this game, Corey Kluber was actually throwing the ball very well. Jeffrey Springs on the other side, same thing. Now he had to come out of this game with an injury. You hope that that's not going to be a, a long term issue for Jeffrey Springs, but. As Kluber came out of the game, the Rays exploded. Seven runs in the fifth inning. Harold Ramirez has had a big afternoon. Of course, Rob Refsnyder got it started for Boston with a home run early off Jeffrey Springs, but up, up and down that Rays lineup once again. Everybody chipping in and pulled a six run lead with three outs to go. So on to the ninth. Braden Bristow facing Kike Hernandez and the pitch. Is in there for strike one. And Bristow making his major league debut. It's a 9 3 ball game, but he has a chance to pitch three full innings in relief to close the game. There's a ground ball to third, and Walls whips that throw across to first. One away. So Bristow would have a chance to pick up a save. Yeah, and he's been impressive. I mean, you really like what you're seeing from him. He's got great mound presence, good demeanor, calm, got everything under control. Love the pitch breakout, that fastball, the cutter off of it, sweeping breaking ball. We saw a change up to left-handed hitter. I understand why he was the the next man up. Strike one on McGuire. That pitch very deceptive. He has gotten a number of swings on that cutter that have been up above the zone or at the top of the zone. Tap foul. We have a chance here for first big league win and the first big league save. We'll just get in line. Kelly. That's what the Rays have been doing. Yep. Kelly. In line to pick up a win here. One ball, two strikes. Yeah. 
Foul back. Well, a couple big hits in that seven run fifth delivered by Harold Ramirez. Just down. Two and two. Uh, <laughs> borderline pitch. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Down. Two two. And the foul. Tomorrow night, Rays and the Blue Jays in Toronto. Rasmussen will open that one on the mound for the Rays. 2 2. Upstairs, and the count's full. Takes care of McGuire. Two up and two down. That's four strikeouts for Bristow. And Yu Chang will be the hitter as the Rays try to close this one out. Trying to become only the third team to win their first. 13 games to begin the season. Foul ball by Chang. That's a strike. There's a fly ball. Center field. Margot's got it. And the Rays have won 13 straight to begin the new season. They have matched the 87 Milwaukee Brewers and the 82 Atlanta Braves. Since 1900, the only three teams to open the season with a record of 13 at all. And the Rays win this one 9 to 3. And I can't imagine those other two squads have done it in more dominant fashion than what the Rays have done it in. It has been an absolute whitewashing of the opposition the first couple weeks of this season. The Rays have outscored the opposition 101 to 30. Yes, <laughs> there you go. And today, 9, 10 and 0 for the Rays, three left, three, four and 0, five left for Boston. First big league win for Kelly. First big league save for Bristol. Kluber, the losing pitcher. Took two hours and 38 minutes to do it before 21,175. And there's the final out. High fives all around. Kevin Cash, Rodney Lenares. First big league save. And the Rays will hit the road. Boy, they have been convincing. 9 3 the final for Brian Anderson and Trisha Whitaker, Dwayne Stats. Hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Rays are winners, and they'll now head to Toronto. Be sure to stay tuned. Rays live the post game for, presented by Advent Health. We'll hear from Kevin Katz, Rich, and Doug along with all of that. Interviews from the clubhouse. Rays are winners, and we will see you tomorrow night.